Well, hey guys, Dave Anderson here, Heli Cools Helipad. Hey, this is a sponsored video by Aiden Jansen. He asked, hey man, can you get a remote starter in this thing? And not just something that, uh, you know, is just going to remote start, but man, he went all out. He wants an alarm system, all that stuff. So I'm like, hey, you know, I'll give it a whirl. So guess what? He sent me one. Oh boy, now I have to put one in there. Okay, so that's what this video is about. Thanks so much, Aiden, for sponsoring this video, sponsoring this build. Let's get cracking. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, these cables haven't moved in a long time. Because I can't get this all the way out without hanging up these wires that I have in here, this doesn't come with a normal LMTV, um, but I do need to disconnect a few of these so I can kind of lay them back so I can get, the, get into this uh, power distribution panel a little easier. One of the very first things that I'm going to do is make sure that I have all of the parts that came with this. And then I'm going to plug everything in. Everything in. I'm not going to need everything, but um, you know what, because I don't have uh, power windows or power locks. You may want to install power windows or locks later on, so I'm definitely going to need to keep those um, intact. But uh, several of these things I am not going to be using, so I'm just going to be bundling them up. But, you know, the very next thing is, is where the heck am I going to put all this stuff? This little guy, as far as I am concerned, is one of the more important places. I want this to be accessible. So this little light will flash, and this is the program button. So anytime I want to program the thing, I need to be able to push this button. So this has to be somewhere where I can easily access it and um, so that it's a little bit visible. Now this little guy has some sticky on the back, so virtually you can put it anywhere that you want to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of hook to it because I've got this nice little carpet that this hook fits right onto. So I'm just going to basically glue a little piece on there. It's going to be great. Now I think I've found a really good place where to mount the siren. Okay, I want to mount it so that it is facing down so it doesn't fill up with water. But I think right on the back side of here is going to be a really good spot for it. Target of opportunity, just mounted on where the old horn went. Yeah, got the new blasters in there. <laughs> nice. And how do I get these wires up in there? Right there. Right up into the power distribution panel area. The alarm wire is tucked and in into a wrap. and comes up and into the bottom of the power distribution panel. It's time to make a big decision, and that is, where is this thing going to live? For my money, I think it's gotta be underneath the power distribution panel. 
there's enough room for placement of it in two different locations. One of them is this back wall here, which is actually the front of the vehicle. There's a pretty big open spot here. And then the other one is right next to window shield wiper motor and either here or either down on the uh, panel there. Okay, there's plenty of room in either spot, so it's up to you just to pick where you like it. This is another component that I need to put somewhere where I can easily get to it. And this is a um, impact sensor. So if the vehicle gets messed with, jumped in, banged on, whatever, this little guy will set off the alarm. And it has a little um, adjustment there. And you need to be able to mount it somewhere where that adjustment is still visible. So in case it is, uh, you know, getting rocked around by the wind or something and it starts going off, you can adjust it back, fine tune it. And um, so that the alarm isn't like giving you false alarms. OK. OK, so I found a little hole right up next to the Vim and I can easily get this to where it needs to go onto the controller. All I need to do is zip tie this onto, oh, probably something like that. Now that everything is put together in this wire harness, there's some things in here that you need to really kind of check out. What things are you actually going to be putting in this thing? You know, I don't have uh, automatic roll-up windows. I don't have uh, automatic door locks. I don't have any of that, but you know what? Maybe someday I will, and maybe you're going to install those, or maybe you already have. So you need to go through these lists and determine what things that you need and what things that you can do without. And of course, the things that you're not going to need, go ahead and snip those off. Now, there is a caveat to that, because there are plenty of wires in here that just supply a signal that is programmable a signal so they could go to virtually anything those are the things you kind of want to set aside so that maybe i don't know you want to run under body led lights or something like that and click them on with the remote you're not going to use them right now maybe but you're just going to bundle them up and keep them out of the way and possibly use them in the future I'm not going to go over what all these wires do because it's going to come with a reference guide and um, it would take me another 10 minutes at least to, to tell you what all of these wires go to. So I'm just going to pull out the wires that I need, strip the ends and get them ready for installation. So this guy here we know goes to the program switch and the LED and we've already mounted that on the console. I have isolated all of the power. So I've got uh, red with black, red, red with white, and red out of this five pin. All of these supply 12 volt power. So I'm probably going to um, uh, cut these and put them into one wire so that they all supply power. This is the other one that's really important. This is the ground. And of course the ground is what you want to hook up first before you hook up any power to this system. This goes to the door lock. It's one blue, one green. I don't even have to have this in here, but just so I don't lose it, I clipped it in and I'm just going to fold these wires up nice and neat and tuck them into that box. This little guy that's right up here, this is a jumper. What this is, is a light flash polarity jumper. So your lights might be on a negative or a positive polarity. And you actually put this inside here. And if I remember right, if you put it on the left, the left two, then that's saying that it's a negative polarity. If you put it on the right two, that's saying that it's a positive polarity. I'm pretty sure that the polarity of the LMTV or FMTV of the parking lights is positive. So I'm going to go ahead and take this little um, jumper 
and put it into the three pin of the positive side. That will be on the uh, right hand side. There we go, just like that. So what I've done is I've bundled up all of my 12 volt inputs. Those are all gonna go to power. This is for the window that I don't have, so that's just tucked away down below. All the rest of the thick wires are on this side bundled up together. All of the um, thin wires are on this side bundled together. And again, most of these I'm probably not going to use. And then I also have the rest of the five pin wires coming up through here. And of course the black being uh, the ground. All right, this comes from the siren. I know that black goes to ground and the red goes to the brown that's on this uh, five pin. The brown is the output for the siren. Next, what I wanna do is hook up the parking lights and that is this one on a uh, 3116. And of course mine is a 1996 vehicle. And so all I have to do is pull this, it's a four pin. Uh, this is ground and that is the switch where I need to uh, put power to. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these little T connectors. Um, comes in a set, I'll put the link in the description and it makes it easy just to splice right into one of these wires. Let's do it. Okay, the white fused wire from the five pin goes into where I put that splice. All right, so that's how it goes on, just like that. Very easy to use. Connecting the ground wire has got to be pretty easy because this whole line, this whole thing is for grounding. It's all ground wires. Hooey! <laughs> hey guys, I see that I'm at my time limit, so I'll catch back up with you next time in part two. Until then, you guys be safe out there, and God bless.